If you feel like your Illustrator sketches look flat, maybe they're lacking a little bit of dimension, I'm gonna show you three simple techniques that you can use to add shading to your sketches in Illustrator and make your fashion drawings look more 3D with folds and shadows. I'll even show you how to save libraries of your shading that you can reuse in every Adobe Illustrator file so you never have to start from scratch. I'm So Heidi, founder of SuccessfulFashionDesigner.com, and I teach designers like you the real world skills that you need to get ahead in your fashion career. It's all the stuff you don't learn in fashion school. I like to call it fashion industry secrets revealed. So let's dive into this tutorial and a real quick heads up before I show you what we're going to do. All files demoed in this video are pulled from the templates for fashion marketplace that I run where you can buy and sell any vector fashion designs that you have. If you're looking for a template to start with, they all run just a couple bucks. Everything is vector and fully editable in Adobe Illustrator. Now we have this sketch here, which arguably is a very great looking sketch, but one of my viewers wrote in and said, I would love to learn a little bit more about adding dimension like you see here in these sketches to my fashion flats within Adobe Illustrator. So here is a couple ways you can do that. To do the technique that we just saw above here, all this simply is, if we zoom in, are these different sort of shapes that we see manually drawn on the, the garment, the purse, the flat, whatever it is, and then filled with different colors of varying shades of the color for the purse. So on this example, we can do that very easily by manually drawing some sort of blobs of shadows that we might see within the sketch. So to easily do this, I'm going to, I know that I want the shadow to be sort of underneath this buckle and on top of this panel here. So I'm just gonna double click on that panel to sort of isolate it, which is uh, called isolation mode. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow me to draw something directly on top of this and then all the stacking order will automatically be set accordingly. So I'm gonna click off of that. I'm gonna grab a, maybe a light gray color or something over here. Arguably we could even do black and I'll show you how to change some settings later so that, that actually works to your advantage. I don't want a stroke color. We're gonna go with fill only. And if you wanna go for this technique, I suggest that you just use, where are you, the pencil tool. I just always use the keyboard shortcut. Hotkey is letter N. Now the pencil tool works great to just sort of draw organically. And so what we saw above, we're just gonna click and drag. And this is how you would do that technique that we saw up there. And we can add some sort of zigzags and jagged edges, whatnot. I'm gonna click and hover, not hover, but uh, just drag over here until I see the little O symbol, which is telling me that that is going to be a closed path. From here, we again, will give it our black fill and we can change the opacity setting in one second. But I do wanna show you a couple things with the pencil tool before we dive in any further. First of all, you can double click on the pencil tool and you can change the fidelity. If you have a very accurate fidelity, what's gonna happen when you draw these sort of blobs is that you're going to get super accurate edges and it's gonna create a lot of anchor points. You see that? Versus if you come up and choose something mm, arguably as smooth as you can go and we draw like a similar sort of blob, it's not gonna give us as many anchor points. It's gonna do something a lot softer. Um, you can always come back and edit. So with this object selected, I can hover close to the edge until that asterisk disappears and I can edit if I wanna sort of smooth that portion out. So it's very user friendly. I do have some videos specifically on using this tool that I will link to above in the corner if you wanna check those out. But from here, let's look at some settings that we might wanna change. So most people, when they do this, I see them just change the opacity to 10, which can work, but I'm gonna show you in a second why this is not the best way to do it. So instead of changing it to 10, I'm gonna come up here and I'm also gonna turn on this multiply setting. Um, and then from here, this may be 10, 20, 30. Uh, it's gonna adjust accordingly based on your sketch. So we could, continue to come through. Maybe we wanna add some shadows sort of under these pockets. So I'm gonna double click here, grab my pencil tool again, deselect that by clicking anywhere off. And then I'm just gonna draw, you know, this sort of organic shape. Let's undo that because let's say I want the shadow to actually line up perfectly with the edge of this shape. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this object, Command or Control C to copy it, and Command or Control F to paste it in front, F for front. 
Once I've done that, let's say I want it to start up in this corner and I want it to sort of end over here. So what I'm gonna do, using my direct selection tool, specifically the white arrow, I'm gonna select that anchor point only, hold the shift key and select that anchor point only. I then can come up to this option on my control bar and choose cut path at selected anchor point. Once I've done that, it's been cut at each of the corners. I'm gonna deselect, select this portion on the right, delete, and now all I have is this object here. Now this does have a fill color, so let's take that, um, actually we can leave that fill color on. What we actually wanna do is take the stroke off and give ourselves a fill color, again, of sort of black. Now I'm gonna grab my pencil tool again, hotkey, letter N, and I could leave this as is, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hover over this anchor point until I see that backslash, and then that's gonna connect me to the path, and then I'm gonna just sort of organically draw this over here until I see the O to know I'm gonna close that. Now I've got this shape that's just sort of filling the corner. Uh, from here, I want to change this again to 10. Let's say that's, I think that's what we had the other one set at, and we want our opacity to be multiply. And again, I'm gonna show you in a second why that's important. But before we go any further, one thing I wanna show you, I talked about this earlier in the video, is how we can save some of these settings for later so we don't manually have to change this every time. I'm gonna open up my graphic styles panel, window graphic styles, and from here I'm just gonna choose new graphic style. That's going to create a graphic style that automatically has the opacity of 10 and the multiply overlay. So now anytime I draw something again, I can just hit the graphic style and it automatically applies those settings so I don't have to do that every time. I'll hit escape to get out of there and now I've got that shadow and that shadow. Now that may not be the aesthetic that you're looking for. You could continue to sort of stack shadows on top and get some more dimension like we saw up here. Again, these are just organic sort of blobby shapes to create this depth. But there's a couple other techniques that I want to show you. And that is specifically to create very um, accurate, different types of looking shadows within your sketch. So I'm gonna show you two more. The first one is going to be with a brush. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna grab the, uh, we could grab the brush tool and we'll give ourselves a black stroke and I'm gonna come over to my brushes panel and I particularly like to load the uh, artistic chalk charcoal pencil. But you can play around with all these and find a brush that you like. So I already have this charcoal loaded that I really like and I'm going to just draw a shape right here. Now at first that looks kind of meh, so what I wanna do is I wanna select this and one setting I really like to do if I'm using this as a shadow is to come into my stroke panel. If you don't have any of these panels up that you see in my workspace, everything is always available under window. Um, so we'll come into our panel and we want to come down to the bottom of our stroke panel and if you don't see that, make sure that you have all of your options showing from the drop down there. Uh, come to the profile at the bottom. I particularly like with profile one, which will make the stroke go from thin to thick, back to thin. Now, depending on how accurate you were when you drew this, you may need to adjust this a little bit. You can kind of do that manually, or you can do it uh, with the pen tool as I showed you earlier. Just hover until that asterisk goes away and you can kind of reshape the path very easily. So once you kind of get that going, you can see you start to create a nice little soft shadow that has sort of these organic edges that a shadow might have. If that's not the aesthetic that you're looking for, there is one other technique that you can use that works really, really well. So let's put that right here where there might be another shadow that we would see. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use my direct selection tool. I'm gonna select this anchor point and I think that's actually the only one that I'm gonna select. So with my direct selection tool, the white arrow, this anchor point selected, and what I will get is I will get everything to the right of it until the next anchor point, uh, or to the left as well as the right. So Command or Control C to copy, Command or Control F to paste in front, and now what I've got, we'll remove the fill color, is a stroke that matches this curve exactly. So not dissimilar to the example I showed you earlier where we did the nice shadow in the corner, that we wanted to butt up perfectly to the edge. So with this object selected here, what I'm gonna do is I wanna give this a fill color of a gradient. Now I can come out of my gradient panel and I can manually do this, or I can come into swatches 
and Illustrator does a lot of the work for us. So I'm in swatches, I'm gonna hover down to open swatch library, and I want to choose gradients, fades. So this loads some great swatches that are sort of pre-faded, so you can play with some of these to get the look you want. Now I realize that does not look that amazing right away, and I'm gonna show you how you're gonna fix this. So with that gradient in there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to the gradient tool on our toolbar, and we have this slider which we can manually play with, or we can just sort of click and drag to reset the entire gradient. So I'm gonna click and drag and just kind of pull this out. You notice at some point you pull it out far enough and that's where you start to get the harsh edge where the edge of the path ends. If you want this to go further, you could always just extend this path you know, further over here and that allows your gradient to go further. But the, the edge of the gradient will ultimately be where the two anchor points if you were to draw a line there. So that looks pretty good. I feel like the black is a little extra harsh. So I'm gonna come over to my gradient panel and I can double click on this slider here which will allow me to change this color. And so what I want to do is just maybe give this a little less black so it's like a gray. And then from here, I would also, personally, I'm gonna change this to multiply, and I'm let's dive in right now to show you why you wanna do that. Um, again, once you have this dialed in, arguably you don't need a stroke on this, that's optional. I would personally take it off, it's simpler just to have the fill. Again, once you have this gradient dialed in, and that's the gradient you wanna use, make a graphic style. So come over to your graphic styles, and now you've got this as one click option to apply to all of your gradient swatches. So once we've done this, uh, we can very quickly, let's make one more because we forgot to do that. So I'll grab this and I will make another graphic style for that. So depending on what aesthetic you like and what look you're going for, each of these techniques may work better or worse for you. But I do wanna show you why you wanna use the multiply overlay. So here's another example of a bag which has this sort of organic blob shape shadows right and it looks fine in black and white but when we add a fill color specifically a pattern we start to get this really muddy overlay so this is a black fill and the opacity is set to 10 but it just looks dirty on top of certain colors and so I never like that aesthetic and so what I want to do is I'm gonna grab one fill color of this we're just gonna choose select same uh, where are we? Fill color. Now I've got all the shadows selected and I'm going to come up to my opacity and I want this to be multiply or perhaps overlay depending on the color of the pattern that you have underneath. You can kind of play with these but multiply at maybe a 5% looks pretty good. What you get is you just get a much more organic transition from a dark teal, a light teal to a dark teal and so forth and it doesn't get all black and muddy and sometimes turns this gross brown color. Again, we could have that saved as a graphic style and if you get all of your graphic styles dialed in, what you're then gonna wanna do is come over to the graphic styles panel. This is how you're going to be able to load these every time you work in Illustrator no matter what file you're in. Come over to graphic styles, save your graphic style library as whatever you want. We'll just call it Heidi Demo and we'll choose save. And from here, I can come over to my duffel bag shading no matter what file I'm in and I can come over to graphic style, open graphic style library. And if you scroll down to the bottom, there's the option for user defined and we can choose Heidi demo and that will open up the graphic styles that we saved. And so instead of having to manually edit all of these, I could have easily chosen the graphic style from the demo uh, graphic style panel that I had saved. So this is how you can quickly apply gradient fades, um, shadows and shading to your sketches to make them a little bit more 3D and add some amazing dimension in Illustrator. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I am so Heidi and I share tons of free tutorials, templates, tricks, and advice that you don't see here on YouTube on my website and my email list. Head on over to SuccessfulFashionDesigner.com to learn more about that and sign up for all the free content that you don't get here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon.